Hey guys, it's Drew with Kusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the most important things coin dealers can teach you, especially if you're a coin collector or a different coin dealer in the space. And also, you know, might, this might apply to other things, uh, maybe in your expertise, if you're not a coin dealer or wanting to be a coin dealer. But uh, let's get this video started. So you guys know me as Drew, and I'm mainly the guy on the camera, but here's Casey, my brother that normally films me, and we're going to give you guys a little bit of a recap of what happened at the Shreveport show this weekend, and uh, yeah, it, it really pertained to what we can learn from other dealers. As Drew stated, we were at the Shreveport show this last weekend, and we decided to go out to dinner with a bunch of coin dealers, and usually dinner is a very intimate um, affair. But I think that it was a great socializing event for us, and we learned quite a bit from a lot of experts. You have people that we sat down with that have 25 years of experience, and here are some of the lessons learned that we received at dinner. Yeah, so one of the big things that we were seeing and talking about was safety. So there's, you know, there's certain dealers out there, and the reason why we want to talk to people that have been in the industry longer is because we don't know everything. And we, our plan is to learn as much as possible without incurring a loss, right? So say someone loses a coin at a show or someone steals a coin from them at a show or uh, they made a mistake while working up a deal or um, they weren't as safe as they used to be and something happened to them. All these things, what we do as younger you know, collectors, younger dealers, is that we have our ears open to all these lessons that we can learn from them. Most of the time when we, you know, see people in the world, we're talking about monetary exchanges. You know, how much money can I make off this person? Or how much, um, you know, what what's the next deal we can get into? And, uh, you know, how am I going to get benefited, right? And uh, for us, it feels more, it's not more of a monetary exchange more than it is a lesson exchange. We don't want to uh, go down a road necessarily that might lead to financial loss or, um, you know, there's certain things that they just know better than us about. And so what do we do for like dinner? How did that all work? And how did you kind of rationale it, you know, um, with what was happening? Uh, I rationaled, I mean, we went about paying for everyone, which isn't a whole lot. It happens all the time with different coin dealers. Um, we're not bragging on ourselves. You pay for a lesson, either it's a cheap lesson or an expensive lesson. Our lesson was Cheap, in our opinion, we got to sit down with a few coin dealers that are millionaires and successful in and outside of the hobby, and we thought that it was uh, well worth the small monetary investment that we made. Um, and safety is just, just the beginning of, I guess, the iceberg as far as what we discussed. Yeah, so what we sat, so we sat there, right, and, you know, Casey's like, we're just going to cover everybody. And most people, they're like, oh, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be that kind of person. And we're not, we're not saying anything is important for paying any, for anybody, right? But say you're sitting down with six or five or four other millionaires, and they're telling you how to run a business that you want to be successful at, right? And so if, someone's pay, if you're paying $20 for someone's meal or $25 for someone's meal, honestly, I would be, it, it's, it's a no-brainer to do that. It's a no-brainer to sit down with somebody and say, hey, let me take care of your meal. Please talk to me about what's made you successful. And so with safety, we talked a little bit about safety. Um, and so what was something that maybe David picked up on or talked about with his new shop or something that maybe Rodney was working? What did, what did you pick up from the conversation that we had about safety? Well, aside from sophisticated safes that uh, many insurance companies recommend you have, TL-rated safes, um, Rodney recommended a TL30 at least. Um, they discussed a lot of uh, camera precautions and insurance involved. Um, David was setting up a shop, so he needs sophisticated cameras to protect his belongings and his employees and his facility. So we got into the cost behind that and just what he would recommend um, dealing with professionals in security firsthand. Yeah, so the one thing that David talked about, which was good, is that he's basically installing a system where what he said is that if you're at the front door of his uh, coin business, 
you could see yourself on the camera, let's say on a television, and it will actually show you the picture quality of how clear your face is. Sometimes, uh, you know, places have like 360p or 720p, very low quality uh, cameras. And he said, I want to invest in expensive cameras because if someone comes to rob my store and say they're not wearing, you know, a mask or something like that, they can see themselves on the screen before they break the glass of the front door or they try to steal something from his his place. Um, another thing that I that we picked up on with uh, Kevin Yipia from Minden Coin is that he spent, I think, $8,000 on his camera setup and all the safety precautions that he needed with the local place there in Louisiana. That was pretty expensive. Um, but it's just something that we can pick up on and learn and say how much we have to set aside in case we ever wanted to open a shop to the public, um, you know, because opening a shop to the public is not a small venture. It's something that you have to plan for, understand up front. You know, you could say, oh, I want to open up a shop tomorrow, but it's like, well, Kevin just spent $8,000 on cameras, and then he has to, sp- you know, send money a local, you know, to a local company for a monthly fee, and then he has to do, you know, safes and everything else. And so, what was something that Rodney talked about with his with his uh, setup with safes? Um, Rodney's very pro safe. Um, the better, I mean, the bigger the better, the more sophisticated the better. Um, he is very very decked out. He's got everything that you could need. Um, most major outfits nowadays they have multiple TL rated safes, like when we. Um, Toward Heritage, they have TL rated safes in every wing of their business for insurance purposes, and it's the best you can buy. So Rodney is uh, pro TL rated safes, and um, I take his word, um, I guess, as gold because he's been in the industry for 25 years, and he has never had an issue. Yeah, for most of you guys that don't know, what I focus on sometimes in coins is buying and selling and working with the customer. And that creates, you know, cash flow for the business. And then I say, okay, well, we can't, our goal is not to pay as much taxes as possible. So Casey would look for opportunities like a Prius or something that's very fuel efficient, or he'll look for a safe, or he'll look for, you know, something that we can use to help benefit, protect, insulate our business. So in case we were to push it forward, uh, we have those things readily available. So we have TL rated safes. And so when we all start talking about this case, he's very enamored by it because there are a lot of dealers out there. They will drop tons of money on security, tons of money on. It's it's crazy what somebody will spend, but then when they get to the safe part of their business, they'll spend five hundred dollars on a safe. And five hundred dollars safes, um, for ones that you buy at Academy that are not TL rated, those things can be opened up very quickly, and they can be taken away, driven off in a, by a truck. And so TL rated safes, if if you could explain it in like 30 seconds, the difference between an Academy safe and a TL rated safe that maybe Rodney or that we have to them. So, I mean, this isn't, I guess, the exact information, but this is my understanding as of right now. With the TL rated safe, um, there is a board, an institute out there. I don't really remember what it is, but... They would rate the safe on how difficult it is for a professional safe cracker to get into this safe. And based on that, those parameters, um, you are allotted an amount of insurance. So, so for a TL rated, for a TL 15 rated safe, it's going to take 15 minutes for a professional safe cracker for a TL 30. It's going to be 30 minutes. And then once you get into more sophisticated, uh, protection, it's going to take much, much longer. So, Um, In relation to your standard uh, Cabela safe, Academy safe, I mean, a few gentlemen can pick that up when it comes to teal rated safe. You're you're talking about 2,000 pounds, 4,000 pounds. I've seen as much as 7,000 pounds, and uh, you're not going to get any group of guys to pick that up. Yeah, and so some of the – what the whole purpose of this video is that you can't look at coin dealers. You can't look at people that are professionals, maybe in a different field, the same as maybe someone coming in from the world saying, okay, well, I'm looking for a financial windfall. You know, what deal can we strike up like we were talking about earlier? What monetary value I can get from somebody? Maybe the the value in somebody is learning that you are not as an expert as they are in many ways. And all you're trying to do is learn and be 
uh, you know, learn and get to their level in terms of what they know about coins, what they know about business, what they know about safety. And so the biggest thing you can learn from professionals in your field or experts is what they know. Be a learner. Be someone that wants to understand why someone is great at something, why they are being remembered as someone that's doing good. And so that our biggest example is this past weekend, you know, um, actually a few weekends ago, Ronnie was at the fun show and he was watching this channel um, and they basically bought a Morgan dollar set. And he said, you know, it'd be cool if they brought that by my table at the fun show, but there's so many dealers out here that I don't know if that's possible. And so they ended up actually bringing that set to him at the show, filming him. I'm going to leave a link for that down below, but he's an expert in his field. And so when people start listening to him and um, learning from him in the video, the video really blew up. I think it's got like 25,000, 30,000 views and Rodney even watched it himself. And so there is so much value in learning from an expert like Rodney or like David or like Richard and Dee Dee or Kevin um, that we just, it was an honor to sit down with them, honor to learn from them. And we can't wait to learn more about what they do to make them successful in the future. Safety was just a little bit of part of that. And so I want to talk about two coins real quickly that we got this weekend at the Shreveport show. It's not all about what we learned. It's about some cool things that we found along the way. We ended up stopping in, uh, in Lake Charles, ended up buying a few coins. Do you want to just show them or just talk to them? You don't have to show them, but talk to them about the, this, uh, gold dollar. Uh, it's an 1849 open wreath gold dollar graded MS 63 by NGC. It, it's a, a, a beautiful coin. Uh, it's, it's a little one, but shines great. The fields are, are clear. Um, just a nice pickup for somebody wanting to get into a, a gold type set. Yeah, that, that gold dollar is pretty tough. When we were taking a look at it, um, I think a lot of these coins were selling for, you know, in a PCGS holder, this is an NGC holder for over $1,000. And so we picked up this coin and, uh, you know, in Min state 62, it's a little bit more easy to find, but 63 and up is tough. And so. Definitely a neat coin. Uh, the second coin I want to talk to you guys about, which is the one that I wanted, really was happy about this weekend, is this 1878 CC Morgan Dollar. It's created Min State 63 DMPL. It's CEC approved. The fields are DMPL. Sometimes when we talk about dimples, a lot of coins got through. A lot of people didn't understand necessarily, even at the grading companies, what dimple really should look like. And um, this one just really has a, a flair to it. It really is a nice coin overall. Has that dimple liquidy field. And this one sold for us over the weekend, which is pretty cool. But definitely a coin that's very tough to find in dimple. And so when I saw this coin, I really wanted to try it out. And uh, overall, what did you? what's your thoughts on just doing dealer to dealer at the Shreveport show? Was it good? Was it okay? It was a bit average. We were grasping for straws for the most part. But, I mean, we did find... Uh, some good coins. I mean, if you walk away from the weekend with uh, very little inventory, but you get to um, mingle and talk to some experts, then uh, I consider it a win. Yeah, I think most people have a misunderstanding of, you know, how these guys, and, and there's a lady there also, but how these guys ended up becoming millionaires. And becoming millionaires is not you know, one day you're worth 300000 next day you're worth a million, right? These guys wor wake up every day. They say they're going to do a good, honest day's work, try to learn, but also try to buy and sell, right? And so we didn't buy a whole ton of coins at this show, but we did, um, we do get to see that it's not a one-day overnight success. It's a day of making $100, making $200 a day, making $300 a day, or making $400 a day like these guys, right? So it's definitely a small incremental process. And so we ended up finding some good coins, had some good company. We were only there for one day and we didn't get to see how the public was, but definitely a good show. Uh, is there anything you want to close out with? I guess the rule of thumb, I guess that would encapsulate this whole video is try to find the room where um, you would be the dumbest. You have the most to learn and uh, you're not necessarily the smartest or the most experienced in those rooms, you will learn the most. Um, there's no benefit to going into a room and being the most intelligent and uh, the most experienced because there's no room to grow. And um, I don't know, you may take a step in the wrong direction. Yeah, I think that's a good point. 
Well, I appreciate you guys watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on this discussion today. Did you guys enjoy that? what we had to talk about? Uh, do you guys see this in maybe your job or at coin shows? And uh, make sure you subscribe because we're coming out with videos every single week. And we want you guys to be a part. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.